Hey, what's up? I'm using ChatGPT to update my resume. I use this prompt. I'm creating a resume. Can you help me with the job description of software? Obviously, I know what I do. I may not be able to word it in an attractive or technical manner. So this is what it gave me. Here's a sample job description of SQA, Software Quality Assurance role that you can include in your resume. Software quality assurance engineer, company name, location, dates, employment, task planning and execution, develop document and execute detailed test plans and test cases to ensure test case software meets um, both the functional and non-functional requirements. Essentially for this task, I would be doing this every day because I would have to be documenting on a Jira ticket or creating a test plan. I could be maintaining a certain test plan at Confluence or it could be on a Google Doc, executing the details. Just say, for example, if I'm doing regression, I could use the test plan as a map or a checklist item to make sure that I'm testing every single thing on the product and provide status as well. Manual and automated testing i can manually test something if it's a new feature something like that and then after the feature is ready i could try and automate the the feature using cypress or i was using ruby and selenium perform manual testing as well as design and implement automated test scripts to streamline testing processes and improve efficiency what i said for manual testing it's it's more exploratory it could be creative, it could be something that you could try to plan out before the feature is being built and then when you get the feature, you could create your test plans alongside of those. In terms of automation, I'm currently using Cypress and I have to write it in JavaScript. It's pretty easy framework to use. And if you go to cypress.io, they have pretty good documentation. You could use also, I'm pretty sure if you ask ChatGPT, give me the steps to create the framework, it will tell you and then it also give you the file structure as well. If you're automating in Cypress and you were doing it for a month, I'm pretty sure, for a couple weeks, I'm pretty sure you would pick it up and you would be learning the tips and tricks on uh, how to automate using this. And also for automation, it's pretty concise in terms of you can run the script whenever you want. It could be pretty quick in terms because for Cypress, you can log in and then it stores the token so that you can reuse it, right? It uses a session so that you don't have to log in each time. There's pros and cons to, to using that session feature. Also, it could be precision too, because just say, for example, if I'm testing a main page, there could be human error, but then again, there are certain things that you can't really test with automation in terms of maybe how something looks. Obviously, I could test is this icon here, but then again, does it look properly? The defects in tracking and reporting. I currently use Jira to track my defects and I could classify the ticket in terms of if it's a bug, a task. I could set the priority. Is a, a P1 important or is it a low priority? You could also give a description. I could add screenshots, video, what sprint it's in, what epic it's a part of, who I want to assign the ticket to, those kinds of things. And Or I could use a spreadsheet. The company also uses, certain companies use Google Sheets or Excel. It depends on what the team's using and QA pretty much adapts to what the company does or how the team is operating, how they want to operate. Performance and regression testing, conduct performance scalability and regression testing. Performance testing could be in terms of JMeter where you could simulate 100 people logging in at the same time and or using the site or if I wanted to use, I think it's something where it throttles the connection speed where I could use CG or 4G or something like that to see if I was testing something on mobile to see if it would work versus, or it could be a web-based product or an app on your computer. Scalability, it could be in terms of 
Can you create tasks that can be added onto in terms of page object orientation where if you have common UI on different kinds of pages, you could create definitions or what is it, artifacts so that you could use them throughout your different test cases. Or if it's specific to a page, then you can create a page object oriented page specific for maybe a settings page or something like that. Regression testing to verify system stability and improvements. Continuous integration platforms such as Jenkins or Kubernetes or something like that could be used where jobs can be set up and they can be ran daily on a schedule versus having to do it locally on your computer. And status progress reports would be given on what passes, what fails, and also they will give you the flexibility of the configuration as well. Agile and Scrum actively participate in daily stand-ups. That's more of a status stand-up. Um, they talk about what did you work on? What are you going to work on? Do you have any blockers? It's normally pretty quick. Some meetings run pretty long. It depends on the people, the number of people, the number of features that are being worked on. Sprint planning. They could be discussing the next sprint's work. Um, how complicated it could be, what requirements, unknowns. They could be discussing the time needed to be spent. Um, some companies, they would ask QA or developers, they would create their tickets, they would create their tasks, subtasks, they would add hours, and you would be able to track how many hours does this person need. And sometimes the person could get the work done within the hour, hours that they say, and sometimes it would take more or less hours. It, it just depends on the unknowns. A retrospective could be a meeting, for example, if they implemented some rules or practices in Sprint 1, and after Sprint 1 is done, they could have a retrospective meeting to reflect on how did it go during Sprint 1, are there any changes that need to be changed, what, what do we do good, what do we do not so good, uh, what can we keep, those kinds of things. And for this Agile, it could be in terms of doing things that are planned out and spaced out so that people have time to get the work done. And also it could be in terms of developers working with QA to make sure pair testing is done versus if the QA has a bunch of tasks and then they have to finish those tasks and then it goes to the next person. That could be somewhat of a waterfall. On a technical level, probably not the most correct, but that's what I think in the general terms of Agile, Waterfall, like development cycle. Development cycle could be something, for example, the planning, the creation, the maintaining, and uh, the phasing out of the uh, products that are created. Also for fixing or maintaining certain things. Collaboration and communication, work closely with developers, product managers, business stakeholders to understand software features to ensure Quality is built into everything. Quality is built into every stage of the development process. Planning is pretty important because it starts before the development starts on. It's better to get a clear image of what we want to create and to do research and to have best practices set into place. Product managers, they more are wikis. They're kind of like the head of the project in terms of managing the development team and communicating with the business stakeholders. And the business stakeholders, they're more giving requests or desires and requirements. And it's pretty hard to stand certain business logics. For example, if I was working on, on a grocery app, right? You, you would have certain barcodes or certain things, business logic. Uh, I would have to learn and understand and um, sometimes I would have to talk to all of these key people to ensure that I know how to properly test the product and if I don't know information I would have to ask and figure out and sometimes even developers and product managers they don't know and they would have to ask the, these key people to, to fully understand that's why Communication that's pretty important amongst the team to provide the most information so that it would prevent back and forth. Also, if there was a miscommunication and certain features were built, 
on. They would have to be changed later on if they were incorrect or maybe if a feature needed to be changed on. That's how software is and it's always changing. Continuous improvement, advocate for QA, best practices and participate in process improvement initiatives to enhance testing, efficient and product quality. This is important to stay up to date in terms of quality assurance, best practices to ensure that we're using the best tools because what I'm using three years ago, it might not be the best option today because the software is always changing, it's always improving and it's kind of like a perishable skill where you always want to be learning and improving so that you could stay on top of the game because if you're not learning, you're probably regressing, right? Because everything is, it's getting more complicated. It's getting more advanced. And we would have to stay on top of our game to make sure that we're doing the best job for the customer, for the company, for ourselves. The job description that I created based on ChatGPT, you could just take the description and then tailor it to what you do at your company I don't suggest you take it word for word because <laughs> they're going to know if you take it word for word. So put it in your own words. And these are other companies that I work for. So you could compare uh, my words versus ChatGPT's words. Take it with a grain of salt. And it is what it is, right? All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. Comment down below, share, subscribe. And I hope you guys have a blessed day.